Hi Libra, welcome back to the Warrior's Journey Tarot. Today we're going to do your weekly love reading for January 11th to the 17th. Now I've missed a couple of days because I love new moons and during the new moon I like to take all of my crystals and even jewelry, silver, things like that, get it all cleaned up in that new moon energy, put my intentions on there, what I want to get rid of, what I want to manifest, especially for the first month of this new year 2019. So I not only put it out for the first new moon day, I put it out for three days. I just wanted to soak it up real good. So since all my crystals were missing, I couldn't put out my readings. I really just didn't feel, um, feel like, I don't know, didn't feel very motivated to do so until my crystals were back. So now that they've been juiced up with that new moon power, which I love, I love new moons. Um, Let's get started with your weekly love and romance reading starting from the 7th, the 11th to the 17th of January. So this is for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for January 11th to the 17th in love and romance, please. We're going to do a full Celtic cross with the Tarot Mucha and clarify with Romance Angels and Whispers of Love. Let's get started. This is for Libra. Someone rising in Venus for the week of January 11th to the 17th, please, in love and romance. Can we please get a full Celtic cross? <clears throat> Let's find out what's going on for Libra. Someone rising in Venus in love and romance for the week of January 11th to the 17th, please, in the form of a Celtic cross. Now, I'm going to give it a good shuffle. The card pops out. That's the signal that that's the end of the shuffle. If it pops out too early, I'll show you guys the cards, give you a brief description, but I'll continue to shuffle. And if it takes too long, I'll end the shuffle. Again, this is for my Libras, please. What's going on for Libras in love and romance? So much has been going on for you guys. I wanted to come out, so let's just see. It was too much, but I'll... Six of Wands, coming home from somewhere, coming home to victory, um, achieving some kind of rite of passage, inheritance, legacy, family, um, commitment, okay? With, I see marriage, stability, solid foundation. The star card. Wishing on a star. Star speaks to that kind of resilient faith and hope that you have in something where you know that if you stick to it, you stick around through the hard times that you will overcome the obstacles and all will work out as you visualize it will, as you know in your gut, in your intuition that it will because you know you can achieve it. And then finally, we've got Seven of Cups. Lots of options. Building castles in the sky. Not enough action, a lot of options. On the bottom, we have the sun. Beautiful. It's about truth, clarity, success, abundance. Could even signal a child. Okay? But these are too many cards. Let's just keep those in mind and continue the shuffle. Again, this is for my Libras, please. Let's find out what's going on for Libras in love and romance for the week of January 11th to the 17th in the form of a Celtic cross. Can we get one card to signify the end of the shuffle? Put that back, actually. <clears throat> it's for my Libras, please. Libra, Sun, Rising, and Venus for the week of January 11th to the 17th. What's going on in Love and Romance? In the form of a Celtic cross, please. It's for my Libra, Sun, Rising, and Venus for the week of January 11th to the 17th. In the form of a Celtic cross, what's going on for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? There we go. Right, I'd like to end the shuffle. Like that. All right. So we got Queen of Wands in the situation. On the bottom, we've got Five of Cups. Challenge, we've got Nine of Cups. We always get that for you, Libra, like a wish coming true. Okay. Death on your mind. Subconscious, we've got Page of Wands. Recent past. Four of Pentacles, Recent Future, Two of Swords. You right now, Three of Pentacles around you. Eight of Wands, Hopes and Fears, Two of Pentacles, Outcome, Magician. Excellent. 
Okay, so let's let's just chop this up and look at the different pieces. <clears throat> Queen of Wands can signify Aries, Leo, Sagittarius in the form of a person. You might be dealing with someone like that. If not, if you're if you are manifesting this kind of energy, the Queen of Wands is someone who's older, wiser, psychic, intuitive, very confident, outgoing, passionate, um, exciting to be around, inspiring, someone who's very um, able to create and manifest, someone who's a go-getter, okay, a power person. Um, also, people will say that the, the wand signs, the royal court cards for the wands, are very attractive people. Now, it could be because they're, you know, into, you know, being attractive because they're so fiery by nature. It could be because they take care of themselves, you know, like going to the gym or grooming. It could also be because, you know, they're attractive because of their personality. It's magnetic because of how competent and outgoing they are. Um, then you've got this challenge is nine of cups. Okay. If the challenge is to embrace something which is your dream come true, a wish come true. Nine of cups is your heart's desire. Okay. So you've got you in this creative, like kind of creating a uh, divine feminine kind of energy here. And then your challenge is this nine of cups, which is about getting you what your heart's desire is. Okay. You can take that as it resonates for you. We'll just keep talking about the meanings of the cards and then see how this figures out. In the conscious on your mind, you've got death. Death is a major arcana card, major secret card. It's about the end of something and the rebirth of something new, a new phase, something in your mind where it has literally been like some phase, some person, something has come to an ending and now you are ready to embrace a new start, a fresh start. Like this situation is dead. Whatever, whatever has passed is over and mentally you're prepared now to move on to the next phase of your life. Okay. On the foundation, we've got page of wands. Pages are collectors of information. We've got more fire energy here. This is called the watcher. Okay. Like the, the page of wands is someone you can see they're collecting information. They're relaying information. This is in regards to the wands. Wands representing fire signs, action and creativity. So this page may be bringing you in your subconscious. Now, this is the foundation, right? The foundation, you may be thinking about relaying a message to someone. Or you may be pondering a new fresh start in a new direction. Okay. Now, in the recent past, we have four of pentacles. Four of pentacles in the recent past speaks to someone who is very... Um, closed off, as you can see in his body's body position there, body language. It's someone who's closed off, unreceptive, can speak to in the material world, miserliness, cheapness, can even speak to greed. And if in love and romance, it can even, that greed can speak to like more of a lust relationship than love. Okay. Because this person, what they're holding on to, they're holding on tight to their pentacles. So whoever this person is in the recent past, when we're talking about love and romance, it's someone who is distrusting, guarded, and closed off, okay? So you see two very different people, right? Like this person in the situation is someone who's excited, adventurous, bold, ready to be like creating, go out into the world competently and manifest. But we see this person in the recent past, someone who is extremely closed off, unreceptive. Okay. So then we have in the recent future, the two of swords, two of swords is an indecision or stalemate Two truths. You have to make a choice. There's something it was a crossroads and there needs to be a decision made before there can be progress. And I see also with the two of pentacles here, right? Two of swords, two of pentacles. Let's see where this goes. Okay. Swords represent signs like air signs, like Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. Wands represent fire signs like Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Cups represent water signs like Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, and pentacles represent earth signs like Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Okay. Now here we are 
with the earth signs three of pentacles as you right now in this situation three of pentacles is about collaboration and working with other people in love and romance it can signify a three-party situation it can also signify like you may be an artist it's the the it's like an artisan kind of card someone who could be an artist now just putting that out there but it's also about getting recognition for your skills Okay, so in the professional world, you may be someone who is, you know, craftsman, an artist, something along the lines, someone who creates. I get a very creative energy here. If that's not the case, it could speak to a collaboration where you work with other people. But when we're talking about love and romance, it could be that there is a third party situation. Let me just double check one more thing for the pentacles now. Yeah, so the wanderer, something powerful governs thoughts and even instincts. It is useful to resist, useless to resist when love has the force of love, artistic expression. Okay, so yeah, artists, art, I spoke about the arts already. I don't know if you're trying to convey your message to this person in an artistic way, in a creative way. I don't know. You could take that as it resonates for you, but... If it's not about the arts, it could be a third party situation. Okay, let's keep going. Because I see like, I'm only saying this because I see two of swords, two of pentacles, right? Like you have a decision to make. Now in love and romance, when do we have a decision to make? Even in the foundation at the, the bottom of the deck, sorry, not the foundation, bottom of the deck, we see five of cups. That speaks to this woman, this hooded figure here, completely caught up in the past with those three of cups that spilled with the two cups that are still upright she's not seeing those two cups right so it's someone who's focused on the past can't focus on the future so if it's we're talking about love and relationship and relationships you focus on the past relationship and you don't even see what's like going on in the current relationship that you're in now could be in in this sense that you have a third party situation because you have a choice to make right you have a choice to make you know you have a choice to make in the recent future but you're hoping to juggle okay and, and keep thinking about it but let's keep going around you there's lots of love and enthusiasm messages coming in eight of wands is like a very positive high energy enthusiastic romantic messages and phone calls and texts back and forth very um around you there's there's a lot of like loving energy passionate energy excitement now in the hopes and fears though you've got two of pentacles two of pentacles generally speaks to now it could be juggling okay you see this woman she's holding those generally it's like something along the lines of keeping head above water a lot of messages again being very busy okay i see with the surrounding energy with the eight of wands and the hopes and fears the two of pentacles like i feel, i see a lot of activity a lot of high energy a lot of busy busy uh communication going back and forth but i ha i just figure that maybe this is a third party situation where you need to make a choice right and the two of pentacles is someone who's able you know to have some plates spinning and keep going it could also speak to innocent games and trying to get some balance out of this busy busy hectic situation okay whether it be through your love life finances everything trying to keep everything afloat trying to keep everything um, spinning but in the outcome I see the magician the first card uh, after the fool in the major arcana this is a major fake card so the influence is going to be strong this week okay when you see major arcana and that's the only uh, we have death and the magician right that's a beautiful thing the cards i've said before uh, in relation to where they are on the spread next to each other or you know that has major significance as well now we're looking at death in the in the conscious and then we see the outcome the magician which is like the end of something and being able to step into a major creative manifesting time magician has the pentacles wands swords and cups all of the elements on the table to be like the alchemist turn water to wine base metals to gold someone who can make magic happen someone who can manifest anything that their heart desires 
Got a little bit of a trickster vibe too, though, the magician, okay? A little bit of a deception vibe too. Because they have so much power. Now, why do you have so much power? Look at you, Queen of Wands and the magician. I see the challenges. Nine of Cups is to embrace... Maybe you're not embracing someone who is actually your dream come true. And you're doing some juggling and you have to make a decision. Okay? Perhaps because you're focused on the past and you're not seeing these two cups, this opportunity um, right behind you there that you're ignoring and overlooking. If not ignoring, but overlooking. Okay, so let's get a Whispers of Love clarifying oracle card. This is for... Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of January 11th to the 17th, please. In love and romance, please. This is for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of January 11th to the 17th. On the bottom, we've got new love. Embrace this new opportunity of love that is here. This may pertain to work opportunities or spiritual growth. But we're going to read the top card. I love you. These are very important words. This is like the sweetest card in the deck. Okay. Beautiful. Let's read that. This is for Libra. The I love you card, number 20. These are very short. Whether you say this to a pet, a friend, your partner, or yourself, these are the most important words you can say. Don't hold these words in like it will take away their importance. Be willing to say, I love you, often and freely. Very self-explanatory and straightforward, right? Show your love and let them know. And say it often and freely. All right, can we get one Romance Angels Oracle cards, please, for Libra? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of January 11th to the 17th. That one wanted to come out. Playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. And then on the bottom we've got, this could be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. Okay, so just to recap. Got playfulness. This could be the one. I love you and new love, right? Based on this... I would just say, when you see this at the bottom of the deck, focusing on the past and not realizing, you know, that you have this wonderful new opportunity, you know, that's right behind you. Again, you focus on the past because your mind, your headspace is at what died, what's over, what ended, right? Um, it's got a lot of heavy baggage with this, okay? And now... You're watching and, and you're not really committed to anything. You're just collecting information. Like you've got a very not yet committed attitude towards things. Why? Because you stepped into this, and I was saying, four of pentacles in a material world sense, like in a you know financial sense, it's about greed, right? In a romantic in, uh, sense, it's about you know more of a lust-centered kind of card. Because when are you greedy in love and romance? It's about being kind of shut off and unreceptive, yes. And when people are shut off and unreceptive in love, true love, being open, right? It's because they're being players, right? And really, when you're a player, it speaks to like, 
you've got certain reasons, whatever they are, that you don't want to be receptive to love and you, you're not open and you're, you're not ready for that yet. So what do players do? They play, right? And some could construe that as being a little bit like lust centered, more so just for the game and for the, you know, passing time and having fun kind of vibe. Um, then you get into this creative queen of wands mode, very outgoing, attractive, confident, you know, very confident with your sexuality, very confident in your appearance, very confident in your, um, mind state. And then, you know, you get this nine of cups drops in your lap, but it's a challenge because you're not accepting it. You haven't accepted it. You have to make a choice. Third party situation, focus on the past, da, 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 boom, bang, boom. And around you, so much love and enthusiasm. People find you very attractive. They're very interested. There's lots of interest. Now, you're hoping to keep it juggling for a minute. A little bit deceptive and trickery with the magician, right? The magician in love is kind of like you've got so much power to manipulate the situation the way you want that you're going to do what you want to do to get the result that you want so i i see playfulness i f i feel this player energy right but there is love and because i saw new love on the bottom of this deck with the whispers of love i feel like it's a new opportunity that is true love and then we got playfulness and on the bottom we've got this could be the one you've already met the romantic partner you seek so you don't need to keep looking basically so you you may have this could be the one so let's read playfulness to recapture romance allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine and playfulness is the romance angels are cherubs who embody all things romantic and who have a happy, youthful sense of playfulness. They delight in the wonders of love and ask you to do the same. The angels want to help you fall back in love with life again by guiding you to enjoy yourself. This comes from a spirit of joy and adventure. The angels ask you, when was the last time you had fun? If you don't remember, then it's too long, uh, sorry, then it's long overdue for you to add some playtime into your schedule. The angels say that fun is a necessity, not a luxury. The activity can be free of charge, such as exploring nature, auditioning for a local theatrical production, joining a community sports team, or trying something new. Playfulness is a good investment of your time as it will renew your energy levels and elevate your mood. Playtime is essential in relationships too, to keep the free spirited component of dating alive. Okay, so see, playtime is essential in relationships too to keep the free-spirited component of dating alive. Plan regular date nights with your partner and take turns creatively planning fun activities such as miniature golf, karaoke, walking through a flower garden, or flying kites together. So, yeah, Libra, it looks like you're still hung up on your past. You're not over it yet. There is a true love situation coming into your lap here. And the only thing is, it looks like you just haven't been having fun for a while. And I've seen that in your past readings too. It's been heavy, right? We know it's been heavy in your past readings. And it's saying, even in your Romance Angels card, saying now it's time to have some fun, right? It's giving you the green light, go ahead. Okay, even in love and romance, to be playful. And keep that free-spirited, you know, free-spirited energy in love alive to be dating right so it doesn't look like you're in for any heavy commitments right now you don't want it it looks to me like you've got options you have a decision to make but really you just want to keep juggling and keep playing right because 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 of the past Okay, Libra, that was your reading for January 7th, sorry, 11th to the 17th. 11th to the 17th in Love and Romance. And uh, please check in again for your other readings. I'll have general readings up uh, sometime after these readings. Okay, take care. Talk to you soon. Bye.